everybody. I'm Larry Ripman Kroger. Come on in. I think I've got some things you might find entertaining. Uh, so this is uh, the beginnings of my, my home office. Uh, it's under construction still. But um, I've got you know, some of the memorabilia out already. I've got boxes and boxes of items from my jet ski past as well as my film uh, career past and past. Um, these are some of the movies I've been in. We, uh, this one is uh, the one that changed my life. Waterworld. Yeah, went from being a pro jet skier to a, a stuntman and all having a dream come true. So that's the one I will always treasure. And then uh, fast forwarding to years later in my stunt career, the next big jump was when I connected with Bruce Willis and became his stunt double. And, uh, Sin City was an amazing experience. We shot virtually all that movie in front of a green screen. Very little uh, live action out on a set anywhere. Um, Hostage, got to be around a lot of fire on that one. And uh, the dream was always that Bruce would decide to do an, a Die Hard movie while I was done with him. And I was with him for a little over 10 years. And when he announced Die Hard 4, I was ecstatic. That was a dream come true as a, as a kid who grew up loving John McClane and the, the uh, Die Hard movies. In fact, on that one, the first day I walked out on the set and we were in Baltimore shooting. It was a cars everywhere, big traffic jam scene. And I walked out onto the street dressed as John McClane and I'm just like, I had to pinch myself. It's like, this you is made it. really <laughs> happening. <laughs> And um, oh, we got some jet ski stuff though, too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Hot Water, um, the movie I wrote and directed as a homage to the sport that has given me this life, and um, really excited about that. That it's out now, finally. What do we got in the back? Oh my gosh, um, some jet ski trophies from uh, that one might be from Japan, I'm not sure. Uh, I was very fortunate. I got to go all over the world um, back in the heyday of the sport. New Caledonia, I know some of these, a lot of races in Japan. This is my old PJS helmet, my final year of competition racing for PJS. Uh, this is from Breaking Bad. That was Brian Cranston's stunt double on Breaking Bad, and when the show ended, they gave us, I wish I had everything here. I've got all kinds of Breaking Bad memorabilia. And uh, this is a special hat that Brian made up and it says. Uh, Can you try it on for us? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Awesome. With the glasses and the goatee. Oh, yeah. So. And it says, I don't know if you can read what it says inside the brim there. You know, Jesse's favorite. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Um, what else? One of the things I used to do in lieu of uh, regular trophies, the Budweiser tour used to give out these beer signs. Can you remember what that was from? This, put the glasses on and I can see. This is, I have a box full of these that will be on display later. Pro Feast, Pro Freestyle. 1991. 91, Manteca, California. That's so cool. I think that's the only race we ever had in Manteca, hmm. um, More trophies, and this was kind of cool. Um, a world famous motocross racer, Brad Lackey, who was like the first American world champion in motocross, uh, met him and we became friends. And he was coming down to Carlsbad for a vintage motocross race, had an extra bike, invited me. So I got to go out and race motocross with Brad Lackey on one of his bikes. How'd you do? I, I did well. In fact, I think I won, but they put me in the novice class, so <laughs> I was <laughs> cherry picking a bit. But <laughs> That's awesome. And this is... Um, I was going to ask about that. Universal Soldier 2. This was... Uh, I was doubling Jean-Claude Van Damme in this opening sequence, and I got Christy Carlson a job on this movie doubling the actress and so Christy was on the back of the ski with me where it was supposed to be. During rehearsals um, myself and another jet skier collided off of a jump and broke my leg so I was on the sidelines and then another stunt guy 
stepped in for Jean-Claude and then they had to get hit by an airboat. It was a pretty gnarly deal and uh, Christy broke her foot on that deal. So that was Christy's introduction into stunts. I don't think she was in stunts very long after that. It might have been the one and only. <laughs> so uh, yeah, ton of memorabilia. I've got, um, what else here? This is, this is fun. When I was racing jet skis, I had dreamed of getting into the movie business. And in the late 80s, Canon Pictures decided they were going to do a jet ski movie. And they called it Guts and Glory. And they contracted me. They used to make all these big action movies with Chuck Norris. And so they told me they were going to turn me into the next Chuck Norris. And uh, I was pretty excited about it. They took the poster and what little of a script that they had at the time. I went to the Cannes Film Festival in the south of France. And I don't know if you can see this, but they made a giant billboard, put it up on top of the main hotel, and really promoted it. And they pre-sold the movie to all these countries. And uh, they came back, we were real excited. And then before it ever got made, Canon went bankrupt and didn't go anywhere. So that's just one of many setbacks on the way to finally getting hot water made and it started way back then in the late 80s. That's awesome. All right, what are we gonna look at next? Um, let's see. Here's my Pro Freestyle World Championship trophy, what, 89? 89. And then, uh, oh my gosh, all kinds of, let's see. I need to do this, I'm gonna have to put glasses on. This is from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. They made these little uh, souvenir cassette tapes because uh, Chris Pratt's character had that tape player and everything. So this is signed by all the actors on Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I doubled Yondu on that. And it was three hours of makeup in the mornings, but still an amazing experience. Um, here it is. I had my own Accessories company back in the day, Ripper Racing. Oh, everybody knows Ripper Racing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, oh, well, oh my gosh. Here's my original Ripping Freestyle VHS tape. How to freestyle. I watched it. I still can't do freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, I've got a ton in boxes that I can't wait to get out of here and get on display. Here is. Um, 1993 Bud Jet Sports Tour, third place pro freestyle. This was some of the coolest trophies they ever gave out, I think, these uh, these eagles. How much does it weigh? It's heavy. I don't know. You don't have to lift it. It's heavy. I don't know, probably 20 pounds. I mean, it's surprising how heavy it is. That's a pretty big trophy you got there. What is that? That is something... Uh, I'm extremely proud of. That is uh, a Taurus Award, which is in the stunt industry is equivalent. That's our highest award. It's equivalent equivalency of like uh, the Academy Award for Actors. And um, this uh, has even more of a special meaning because it's for the the last Die Hard, the fifth one. Uh, on the fourth one, I was in a catastrophic accident. I fell off a fire escape, 25 to 27 feet, right to my face, right to the pavement. Um, wasn't expected to live. A lot of people said career ending injury. It was definitely the low point in my life. It was uh, a year of pretty consistent surgeries and then another year of final surgery. It was a two year recovery period. And um, finally started working my way back into the business. And then it was about a five year, six year gap. And Bruce decided to do this last Die Hard and I came back to double him on that one and just was so focused and so ready and just kick butt and end up winning the Taurus Award for the, the car chase that we did that is supposed to be taking place in Russia and uh, got to crash a lot of really expensive Mercedes vehicles in that one and uh, came away with the award and that was a great way to close that chapter and start slowing down a bit with stunts and start focusing on producing and directing and that's what during the time I was laid up, uh, not able to work, is when I really polished the script for Hot Water, and that's when that all came together.
All right, Larry, where are we at? Oh, uh, we're in the garage. Here we go. Um, I managed to hang on to a few things from back in the era. Um, one of the things I'm excited about that I didn't hang on back then, but I managed to get a hold of is a uh, replica of my freestyle ski. I think this might have been the final year that I did freestyle, if I'm not mistaken, um, early 90s. We, uh, when we were building my freestyle ski that year, we had a customer call up and he wanted a replica of it, so we built two of them. And uh, he took this one and rode it a bunch, and then he had a shop out in Florida, so he put it on display in the shop. In fact, I kind of giggle because you can tell which side was facing the sun in the showroom because the day glow is all faded out here. And then if you look over here, the day glow is still pretty bright. So. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, I got it. what happened was uh, he put this on Craigslist and Ty McFarland saw it and took a screenshot and sent it to me. He said, if you don't buy this, I'm going to. So I got a hold of the owner and bought my old ski back and uh, I've rebuilt it. It still has uh, Kirker pipe, super trapped exhaust, uh, all the things were, that were uh, the go-to pop-ups for back in that day and uh, we'll have to follow up once I get this thing fully assembled and we'll take it out and ride it for the first time and see if I can still stand up on this game. For here, this is actually just a stock 550 but uh, I saw online uh, the graphics company was making ripper replica graphics so I ordered a set and uh, that's about the only modifications that ski has. This one run? Yeah, runs good. That's the old go-to recreational 550. And then this one here is actually a stock uh, 800, but we put the Broward graphics for hot water on it because it actually acted as a backup ski. And um, Tara Lejo ended up riding this when we did pickup shots when Richard slammed into her and sent her into the buoy. That's the main thing this ski was used for. We so this was your crash ski? This was a crash ski and it, it survived pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't see any, you know, a couple of scuffs. No major there, damage. No major damage, yeah. So. What are you going to do with this one? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't decided. <laughs> <laughs> what else you hiding in here? A couple of sit downs. This one is set up for flyboarding, which uh, I, just, I just love. I can't get enough of flyboarding. There was flyboarding in the movie, right? There was, yep. And if you pay close attention, the person on the sit-down ski flying the actors was actually me. I thought so. <laughs> nice. Okay. So I don't know what else I've got in the way of memorabilia. Oh, this, for sure, you got to check out. This is the uh, Ripper Racing Watercraft Shoes. Yeah, this is before their time. This was the second generation one. The first generation was like a gray model, and then the second year was the, this design here, and... The, at home, I've got the actual box that these came in and a brand new set that have never been worn. These look like maybe they've put them on in the size feet you have, Anna. I don't know. They might fit. Check these out. They <laughs> might fit. I may have to do a little modeling session with these at Heck some yeah. point. <laughs> so these were like the first race or jet ski yeah. shoe, right? Yeah, back then we were all wearing tennis shoes or wrestling shoes was more of the go-to for that everybody was wearing back then. So this, mm -hmm. this didn't even exist until then. So what was it like when you were at an event and you're like looking around and you see a bunch of people wearing shoes with you on them? Um, that's pretty cool. You know, I'm, I'll take it. <laughs> Did you ever autograph a pair of Ripper boots? Oh my gosh, yeah. We Especially if I went overseas and I was working with the distributor for them overseas. Yeah, we did a so lot. So you've signed a lot of shoes in your life? A lot of shoes. I've signed babies. I've signed baby diapers even. Um, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> This is the uh, Richard Hurt ski. Yes. This is. This ski runs good. It's got a triple 1100 in it. Um, had quite a bit of work done to it. It runs really, really good. But ironically, it still wasn't as fast as the Pro Force. So Victor Sheldon rode this ski, mostly Chris McCluggage, who was on the Pro Force. And the hardest thing about that was getting Chris McCluggage to take a little off and slow down a little so Victor could stay with him because, you know, Chris McCluggage, he's all about throttle. <laughs> <For> so, <sure. laughs> that was one of the challenges there. But uh, 
This one, I believe my nephew, Balin Ripper Kroger, is got dibs on it. He's gonna buy that. So nice. he won't be here much longer. And then it looks like you got a whole mall over here. What's what's going on <laughs> over here? Let's start on the right side. What's over here? Oh my gosh. Well, this is one of my old vests from one of the back in the day. I have no idea. What's the brand? What year? This I think is a chip. Yeah, so Can you still fit in it? Oh, I imagine if I suck it in, <laughs> I probably could. <laughs> and this here is 1994 PJS Factor Team. This was my final year of competing, um, riding for PJS. Is that when you were on the sit down? Um, yes, that's when I came back and rode sit downs in '94, and that's the same year when I got the call to go to work on Waterworld and. All that craziness was going on, but yes, I managed to hang on to this, which I'm really happy I did. This is uh, good memories. My final year on tour. Your last competitive wetsuit, right there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's awesome. What else you got on the rack? Lots of life jackets and wetsuits for friends that come into town and want to ride. And I've got my personal suit down here that uh, Jet Tribe hooked me up with, and I've got Kelly Weber's. I'm As checking. seen in hot water. Hot water, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kelly Weber's wetsuit from hot water. Yeah. May have to do a contest or something for that, or, or maybe put it on display in the new uh, display shop. Um, or Jet Tribe gear from the movie. I think this was Richard's, Richard Hurt's wetsuit from the movie. I have to go back and double check. Can people buy those style of suits from Jet Tribe you still? Can, yeah, absolutely okay. go on Jet Tribe and they have, uh, not only do they have hot water memorabilia wetsuits, but they have um, the same wetsuits that we were using in the movie if you wanted to look just like Kelly or Richard or Billy. It's cool. All there. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, walk down memory lane. I've enjoyed it and I hope you have too. I gotta go, so we'll see you. Spielberg. Steven, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm available.